Okay, so first of all, let's create the text. We'll choose the text tool and write. Let's. Now select all the text and change the color to blue. Make sure the text is centered and the writing direction is from left to right. Next, let's align the text to the center of the composition using a line. Press here and here. And if we zoom in a bit, we can see that the anchor point of this layer is not centered in the layer. Let's use the shortcut we learned to do that and press Ctrl Alt Home. And now, because we know that we are currently preparing the second scene, in order to maintain the project organized, let's nest this layer into a new precomp. What is precomps? Precomposing is a technique used to group layers together and treat them as a single layer. It is a very useful tool in After Effects that can simplify your timeline and help you organize your project. One of the main advantages of precomposing layers is that it allows you to keep your timeline organized and easy to manage. By grouping related layers together, you can reduce clutter and make it easier to navigate and edit your project. So let's precompose this text layer together. We can do it in several ways. We can right click on the layer and choose precompose. Or we can use the shortcut and press Ctrl Shift C. Now let's give the new precomp a name. Let's call it Let's Go Comp. Make sure both are selected and click OK. And there you have it. A new composition is created, which we can also see in the project panel. If we enter it, we can see the text layer we created. This will make it much more convenient for us to create the second scene. Now let's go back to the selection tool. Set the preview screen to fit. And now, let's turn this text layer into a 3D layer by clicking on this icon here. For those who don't see it, you can click here. So let's click on the 3D icon. And there you go, the layer has become a 3D layer. But if we change the preview's view angle from active camera to custom view one, we'll see that the text doesn't have the 3D volume. To do this, we need to switch the software's rendering engine from classic 3D renderer to Cinema 4D renderer. For those who don't see it in the preview panel, you can press Ctrl K to access the composition settings we are currently in. And now, go to 3D renderer and change the renderer from here. Let's click OK and continue. As you can see, for now, nothing has changed. But if we open the layer's properties, we'll see that a new property called Geometry Options has been added. Let's open that. And now I want to show you how it would look if we hadn't switched the renderer. I switch it back to Classic 3D. And as you can see, the Geometry Options parameter is not active. That's why we switch to the Cinema 4D renderer. Okay. So now, in order to create the three-dimensional volume, we need to increase the value for the extrusion depth property. Let's set it to 35. That should be enough. The larger we make it, the more difficult it will be to render the scene, which will slow down the computer and the software. Okay, now let's add color to the sides. For that, we need to select the text from here. Go to Animate, then to Side, then Color, and choose RGB. Now let's select the color palette through the projects panel so that we can see the colors and we'll change the color using the eyedropper to gray. Beautiful. Now we can close the layer and move on. And if we change our preview angle from costume view one to top view, we can see that the anchor point of this layer is not centered. So let's select the anchor point tool and move the anchor point from the Z axis. Now let's switch back to active camera to see the scene from a regular angle. Also, don't forget to switch back to the selection tool. All right, and now we are ready to animate this scene. But before that, we can enlarge this panel. Set the preview to fit and let's animate this layer. Our goal is to animate the layer moving towards the camera, which requires animating the position property. So let's press the P key. And as you can see, because we turned this layer into a three-dimensional layer, we added a new axis of movement. In addition to left and right, down and up, we can move the text closer or further away from the camera. I'll press Ctrl Z a few times. 
and let's animate it together. Let's set that at this point in time, the position of the text will be here. And after two seconds, the text will move closer to the camera. In order to move this layer in larger increments, we can hold down the shift key while changing the value of the Z axis. And in order for the text to pass exactly in the middle, we can also move it along the X axis. That means shifting it sideways. Since we are dealing with 3D layers, the project may work very slowly. To help After Effects preview the scene, we can lower the quality of the preview here. Let's choose quarter. Now we'll see the scene slightly more pixelated and with lower quality, but After Effects will work faster. And continue moving the layer forward and arrange the movement so that the text passes exactly through the center. Let's see how it looks. Let the software render the scene for a few seconds. And now, to make the movement smoother, let's change the keyframes to Easy Ease. And now, let's see it again. One more time. Looking good. After we finish with this word, let's create the animation for the second word. To do this, we can duplicate this text layer using Ctrl D. Then, we can temporarily turn off this layer. Now let's press here twice and change the word to Go. Hold down the Shift key to write it in capital letters. Let's change the color of this text to yellow. Now go back to the Selection tool and see how the movement we created looks with this text. Now, let's make the text pass through the letter O. For this, we need to adjust the animation of this layer a bit. To change this animation, we need to see its keyframes. Let's press U to do that. Now let's go to the last keyframe. Hold down the Shift key while moving the time indicator so that it snaps exactly to the keyframe. To achieve the desired result, it's crucial to change the value only when the time indicator is placed in the specific keyframe we want to change the value for. And now we can change the value of this keyframe. Let's move the layer backward and adjust its position to make the layer get out of the frame through the letter O. You can also click on the value you want to change and adjust it using the up and down arrows on the keyboard. Once done, let's review the outcome. Now let's turn on both layers and bring the time indicator here so we can see the layers. We can place this layer here. And now let's create a cool entrance animation for these layers by using a scaling animation. So let's make sure we are at the beginning of the timeline. Select both layers and press the S key. Now let's decide that at this time, the size of the layers will be zero. So let's change the value and create a keyframe with this value. And at frame number 15, we will set the size of the layers to 100%. Let's convert these keyframes to easy ease. Turn off one of the layers and see how the animation we created looks. Looks good. And now, let's time the two layers to enter the scene one after the other. For this, let's move the time indicator forward in time so we can see both of the layers. And now, let's move the Go Text layer forward in time. Let's see how it looks. I think we need to move it a bit more. Let's see it now. Maybe even a little more. Okay, let's move this layer to the second number 1 and 15 frames. Yes, that's better. The two layers have already left the scene, so we don't need this part of the timeline anymore. Let's shorten it to the end of these layers animation. For this, we need to see the keyframes of all the layers. Let's make sure we're not selecting anything. 
Question. Which key should we press to see the keyframes on the layers? Press the U key. And there, we can see that the last keyframe is here, which means the animation ends here. So let's place the time indicator here. And to shorten the timeline, so called the work area, we'll move it manually or use the shortcut, the end key. Now let's right click here and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. When we go back to the main composition, we can see that this pre comp has indeed been shortened. And now, What's left to do is simply time the animation in this pre-comp with the animation of the first scene. We can bring the pre-comp down here and move it relative to the animation of the first scene. Let's place it roughly here. Give it a few seconds to render the preview. Looks nice. And now, let's create the background. For this, we'll use a layer called Solid. There are two ways to create a new solid layer. You can right-click here, go to New, and select Solid. Or we can do it with the shortcut Ctrl Y. Let's change the color of the solid to the bright color from the palette using the eyedropper. Now place the solid below all the layers, and before we render the scene, Let's delete the unnecessary layers in it. Let's click here to see the hidden layers. We can unlock the color palette and erase it using the backspace or delete key. Let's also delete this text layer. And now, let's shorten the work area here. Because there is nothing happening here. Therefore, we don't need this entire section. To shorten the work area, let's place the time indicator here and press N. In this case, we don't need to crop and adjust the work area, because After Effects will render only the selected work area boundaries. Okay, now let's see the entire animation from start to finish. Let's set the preview to fit. We'll turn off the grid. Press the apostrophe key and then press the spacebar. Be patient, and give After Effects some time to render the preview. It looks good and is ready for rendering. So to render this scene, Go to Composition and choose Add to Render Queue. Or we can use the shortcut Ctrl M. This is the After Effects Render Queue panel. So first, we need to decide which format we want to render this animation. We can do it by changing the output mode. So let's click here, and now choose the H.264 40 megabits per second format, which gives us a high quality MP4 file. Then, in Output 2. We can choose where to save the file. Let's save it in the renders folder we created earlier. Now you can change the name of the file, or leave it as it is, and then hit save. And finally, let's hit the render button to render the animation. Let's wait a few moments. And now, to see the render, we can open the output mode, and click on the link here. Let's see how it looks. Looks nice. Now you can share it on social media or add it to your website portfolio. Okay, now let's go back to the project and organize it before we close it. We can close this. We can also close this pre-comp. Now let's go to the project panel and organize it using folders. Let's click here to create a folder and call it pre-comps. Now let's make sure we don't select anything and create another folder named Assets. Let's place here the color palette and the folder of the solid that was automatically created when we created the background. Now let's move the pre-comp we created, which is, of course, within our main composition, into the pre-comps folder. I recommend leaving the main composition outside. And to differentiate it from other compositions in the project, we can tag it with a blue color. Now let's press Ctrl S to save the project. And now you can close the project. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. But before that, you might want to take a quick break for about 10 minutes. Get up from your chair, stretch a bit, and make yourself some coffee. 
It'll give you a chance to recharge your brain before the next lesson. See you there.